before you, and we saved our best for last. Last, you know, Harris can be preaching our best for last. Oh, so.
So there are a couple of ways that when I'm trying to figure out what something really means in the Bible, you know, there are a couple of tools that I go to to try to figure it out. One of them, I have this uh, pretty cool interlinear Bible that tells me like Greek words and stuff. And so it was actually really meaningful when I looked at this word follow because, wow, I have another crack in my phone. Amen. <laughs> so the word follow is apocalypheo. And it's... It, that's the original word when the when the scripture was written, apocalypse, and it has a lot stronger meaning than the word follow. We kind of watered it down um, in our in, in our English language. Um, but one parallel word to apocalypse is to it, to put on something, almost like clothing. So if you're following Jesus, it's like you're putting on Jesus, like your coat, right? You're putting on his perspective, the the things he does, the things he says you're putting on everything about Jesus and becoming the embodiment of him. Another parallel word is imitate. And in the Jewish culture, there would be rabbi, a, a rabbi and student relationship. Every student had a rabbi. And what that meant, it wasn't just like some cool teacher or, you know, you're his apprentice or whatever. No, whatever the rabbi did, you had to do that. There's actually a, a time in, in that Jesus' students Asked him like, um, hey, you know, can we sit at your right and left hand? And he's like, uh, can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? Mm -hmm. And you might think they're prideful when they say, oh yes, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink that cup. Like, do you guys think you can be like Jesus? But as his students, that was what they were supposed to say, and that was what they were supposed to do: is imitate Jesus, no matter how hard it was going to be. And so, uh, if we're going to follow Jesus, we need to imitate him, no matter what's going on in our lives. And another kind of parallel word to apocalypheo is a company. And not just like some travel partner, but a company, it's really in the context of like a dog is how they would use it. You know, you think a dog is the most com committed partner that you could ever have. A dog will follow you to the ends of the earth. You know, it'll, um, it's waiting for you to get home. It's so happy to see you when, uh, you know, if you died, it would probably just sit there like waiting for you to wake up just until somebody gave it a reason not to. And, uh, you know, even you think about it, if you, if you locked your girlfriend in a trunk, open up the trunk, what would, what would be your response? Like, what, what, would, what would she look like? She'd probably look like this, right? <laughs> Dogs will be 
unreasonably committed to you, no matter what's going on. And so if we're going to follow Jesus, we have to be unreasonably committed to him, no matter how hard things get. Come on, Harrison. So all you guys are in kind of different stages of your relationship with God. Some of you guys are still, you know, still trying to figure out how to commit to God. Whether you are trying to figure out your belief in him or whether you've committed to a couple things but are trying to make that all-in commitment and repentance. Some of you guys are trying to step into a committed relationship with Jesus. Some of you guys have kind of fallen back to the commitment you once made and you need to step up to that commitment that you initially had. And some of you guys have been fighting and fighting and you just need to keep stepping forward. But no matter what, you guys have to keep following Jesus in his footsteps. Come on, bro. And we all need to figure out where we need to fight for our commitment to God. Yeah. Good stuff, Harrison. And so another another tool that I kind of use when I'm trying to figure out what, what, what something in the scripture means, we want to figure out what following Jesus means, let's go back and read through the passage and get some of the context. You know, the Bible app word scripture of the day can be so misleading. Um, you know, it just gives you kind of one scripture, and if you don't really know what that's supposed to mean, that's not going to do it. One of my pet peeves is when people say um, Philippians 4.13 is, you know, their favorite scripture because, you know, you can go into finals without studying at all and get it. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not what the scripture is talking about at all. Just, just read a couple of verses before and you'll see what it's talking about. But let's do that here. All right, so let's go to 1 Peter 2, verse 11. All right, bro. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to Donald Trump, um, you know, or, or the police officers who are sent by God to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. Some of you got really quiet when I said Trump's name. Um, but amen. We have to submit to our authorities. Um, for it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the talk of foolish people. The ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to a few people. Oh, sorry, hold on, let me read that again. Show proper respect to most people. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Show proper respect to the people you like. Wait, hold on, sorry. Uh, show proper respect when you feel like it. No, no, no. Show proper respect to everyone. Amen. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor Donald Trump. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Amen. Yeah. You know, one of the first things Peter does is he kind of outlines the challenge of commitment. One of the biggest battles is that in verse 11 it says there are gods waging war over your souls. There are idols that are trying to fight to grab for your attention. And, uh, you know, it's funny because there are um, there are um, a lot of things said about our generation, right? And I feel like one of the things that is said about our generation is that we can't commit to anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, it's ironic. I would actually, I would actually beg to differ. Yeah. Uh, to get into college, I had to commit to a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, you know, I had to build up a resume. These are some of the, all the different involvements. That's not even... You know, majority of this, but you know, we have to get into a lot of different things to get into college. I didn't have to get to uh, Andrew. Uh, I was trying to you know, be diverse. And, uh, but, 
Um, yeah, we, 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 we have to commit to a lot of things, so that's kind of confusing. You know, and, and even um, amongst all these things, really, I was, I was committed to my self-image. I mean, the whole reason I did all this stuff is because I wanted to look a certain way to garner respect from the people around me. Even yeah. the, that was even the reason I wanted to go to college and get a good job so that people could respect me. So I was, I mean, I was committed to my self-image. And you know, um, but people might say, well, well okay, if, you're, if our generation is, is good at commitment, what about the divorce rate? Why is, mm -hmm. why is divorce so high? I mean, first the statistics, when people started you know, being concerned about it, the statistics said that the divorce rate was 50%. And then a couple of years later, it, it actually went up to 60%, and it might be even higher now. Yeah. But, okay, if, you know, what's going on? If our generation can commit, then why is that the problem? Well, divorce, honestly, isn't a problem of whether someone can commit. People get divorced because they are committed. Committed to their sexual pleasure. Yeah. And, and as soon as someone doesn't satisfy them, then divorce. Yeah. Or committed to their feelings. Yeah. As soon as someone doesn't make you feel the way that you exactly want to in one moment, divorce. Or committed to their pride. As soon as their pride is challenged, divorce. You see, our issue, it's never been a question of whether we can commit. It's a question of what we commit to. And so a lot of us have to challenge uh, or have to battle against different idols that are fighting for our attention. Some people have to fight against comfort, power, our feelings, certain relationships, whether that's your parents or a significant other, a sibling, a best friend, or someone you look up to. There are so many idols that are trying to grab your heart. Yeah. But if, you have to, if you want to be committed to God, you have to acknowledge those and strike them down. Amen. But I wanted to ask you guys, and hear from you guys, you know, I know finals are coming up, and, uh, you know, I know the break, the winter break is, is about to come. We're going to be, you know, separated from a lot of the family here and, uh, and potentially entering in situations where we used to be in a lot of sin. And so, you know, between finals and break, there's going to be a lot of idols grabbing our attention. But I wanted to ask you guys, I wanted to hear some answers. Um, you know, what are some idols that are going to be fighting for your soul these next couple of months? Yeah, school. How is that going to be? Uh, try not to like put all my future expectancy on what I did in grad school or whether I do really well in these finals coming up. Uh, like trying to not put all my time into that. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Well, I saw this over Thanksgiving break for me, but whenever there's a break, I tend to idolize just my comfort like I'm like okay I've got nothing right like brain rest you know but to the point where um, I don't want to connect with God I don't want to go deep I don't want to like put effort loving people I just don't want to fight for anything I just kind of want to zone out yeah mm -hmm. comfort can be a big one right and, um, it's actually the thing about commitment is, is kind of interesting um, do you guys know what this is by the way it's a ring. It's a ring. It's a wedding ring, okay? So, um, as of a year ago, uh, no, 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 as of a year and a half ago, I didn't know that there's a difference. I, I was actually, so I was trying to, um, you know, start figuring out what I was going to propose to Zoe and stuff. And uh, so I did some research online and I was looking for rings. And is there was this thing, you know, one one of them said engagement ring, the other one said wedding ring. You gotta buy both. And I did not understand. I was like, wait, what? Like, is that the same thing? And so I had to ask, I had to ask my parents, I had to figure out, like, what, what is this? There's two different rings? Like, I never knew that. I just saw the guy, you know, get on his knee and, and have one ring and it had a big diamond. And I, I didn't understand which one and which is which. So I figured out, okay, you know, there's one ring that the engagement ring, when I proposed to, to Zoe and um, that's usually the one that's kind of you know more fancy and everything. Then you know, so that's the first part of that commitment. And then when we get married, then there's a wedding ring. 
okay? And that's kind of a little less fancy. So some of you guys, I just helped you out and educated. <laughs> 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 so, you know, it's so, it's, uh, it's, 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 but, but then, so after, you know, after you have the ceremony and get back from the honeymoon, move in together, uh, then there's a, 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 a part of the relationship that, you know, sometimes, you know, we don't exactly know about it, um, it's, it's a third ring um, called Suffer That's Ring. Right. <laughs> 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 uh, but, you know, if you're going to be committed, you're, you're, you can't serve the God of comfort because things aren't always going to be comfortable and easy. You're going to have some challenges along the way. Um, Nadi, do you have much you want to share? Oh, yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, whenever I go home and I'm with my parents, I think, like, Bria, I can really idolize comfortability, but I think um, I notice, especially around my parents, I can just, like, fall back into, like, oh, I'm a kid, like, I live in their house kind of mode instead of, like, just fighting to be, like, intentional and, like, giving to them and, like, serving around the house, like, doing the dishes where I mm -hmm. never would have done that. To be intentional, like, wow, their dishes in the sink and nobody's done them. Like, just making the decision to do that, I think I can, like, yeah, yeah I can just really idolize, like, just wanting to, like, be little Nandi again, be comfortable, and, like, just kick back to my seat and be like, I'm on vacation, right? Um, and I can, like, yeah, I just not want to give in the ways that I know that I can, and I really need to. Mm -hmm. how, much, how much would your parents love you guys if you did the dishes? Oh and that's just like, they'd be like, who are you? What did you do? Like, oh, that's not the other thing. Oh, that's shit shit. Yeah. I think because I'm at home, like, I live at home and I commute, I like to keep busy and, like, keep, like, I idolize being busy and having things to do and always, like, doing something rather than, like, actually sitting down and relaxing. I don't know, like being more intentional in serving my parents, if that makes sense. Like I I like being having things to do. It's just something that comes out family, you know, and if you guys relate to that, something that comes out family, it's like, why was I that impatient? Like, you know, but I don't know, you just get comfortable with them, I guess. Like, after like a week, I was like, eh, I can wait. 
put some next to me, but next to next to then I'll call somebody again. I know I missed this day, but I can do it again the next day. And obviously I'm like, you know, I gotta keep like, I just like stop completely. And it happened again over Thanksgiving break where I was like, I can call someone, I can talk to someone, but I'm like, you ain't gonna do that at all. And I just end up feeling like me by myself. And I'm like, oh man, it kind of sucks when it's like, I can't fix that myself. So I gotta focus on like, just over on my own.
in the way that I prioritize hanging out with them over like hanging out with people from the ministry, um, or like just like um, trying to push away from like just being around and being intentional with my brothers and sisters so that I can have time with people who are not disciples, who are not bad people, but who are not building me up in the way that. like Malcolm was saying where like I can just kind of like let myself not follow the example of people that I might follow up with or like yeah yeah <laughs> um, it can be really easy to forget about all these people in here who you know some of us have the love between us in this room is one of the greatest things we can experience but for some reason we go off in the break and we just forget about everybody who loves us so much I remember my first summer, Jordan texted me like two or three times at the beginning of the summer, and I'm pretty sure I didn't respond to you until I got back. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't be like me. Keep in touch with everybody in this room. types of idols trying to battle for our attention, right? And um, the thing is, you know, I, I don't, you guys like different types of movies, right? For me personally, I enjoy a good comedy, uh, you know, maybe a good action movie with a superhero every now and then. But for some reason, people like these, you know, these movies called romances or whatever. <laughs> how many of you guys, how many of you guys have seen The Notebook? Oh, what? <laughs> I have never seen that movie in my life. I probably never will. Unless so I don't, I don't, I don't get it. It's just a made-up love story. It's not real. I don't get it. But, uh, but there's, there's, there's one plot line. Some of these love stories or romances where there's this girl who's the main character. And she finds this guy, and there's like, you know, whatever, love at first sight, if you believe in that. And uh, and so, you know, she, she feels like she loves this guy, and, she, and he kind of likes her too. And then she finds out that he's married. And, oh. it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, but, but then this guy is like, oh, you know. I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I love you more. I'm gonna give up my wife for you. And so in some of those scenarios, he gives up his wife to go be with this girl, right? And and how does that usually end? It usually, happen, it, it usually ends bad. Usually that guy ends up cheating on the girl that he just left his wife for. You know, it just this guy, you know, he's this guy, this cheating husband. He just he was really looking out for his own interests at the end of the day. And uh, if you can't commit to this first wife, what makes you think you would commit to this, to this next one, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, but with these idols that are waging war over our souls, they're like the cheating husband. They couldn't care less about you. They're here to serve their own purposes, and they want to tear you to shreds. They don't care what happens to you. They want to leave you for dead. They're just here for themselves. Those idols that are waging war for your souls are not worth it. But on the other hand. We got Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he put rings in his hand and proposed to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus is committed to you. The question for you is are you going to commit to him? Yeah. Yeah.